many changes, but um, let me actually highlight uh, three of them. Uh, the first major change is actually to move away from value at risk towards expected shortfall. So value at risk has many deficiencies. For example, it doesn't capture uh, very well the tail uh, risk. And that's why the Basel Committee decided to move away from value at risk and to introduce expected shortfall um, metrics. And to be precise, um, they introduced a 97.5% uh, expected um, shortfall. There's some challenges as well with, uh, with using that metrics. For example, backtesting uh, is, uh, is, is a challenge. It remains to be an academic um, exercise, not fully resolved yet. The second biggest uh, change is actually the introduction of, uh, of the market liquidity uh, horizon. During the financial uh, crisis, um, we've seen an, uh, an impairment of, uh, of liquidity in various uh, asset markets. Um, banks were not able to sell uh, illiquid assets anymore. They were not able to hedge uh, the assets anymore, at least not um, at, uh, at the same price without affecting actually the, uh, the, the prices. And that's why the Basel Committee introduced the concept of, uh, of a liquidity, a market liquidity uh, horizon. That's not straightforward because you do not always have the, uh, the underlying data to calculate the, 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 the horizon. The, the methodologies need to be correct in order to make everything uh, consistent from a risk perspective. So. Uh, quite some challenges and, um, and changes um, there is, uh, as well. The third biggest change is the PL uh, attribution process that banks need to have in place at a desk uh, level, so that's an, uh, a key uh, change. So banks really need to have this process in place, they have to demonstrate that the risk factors that they're using in their risk models really drive the, uh, the PL, that's, that they're significant um, enough. Uh, you can use the uh, accounting PL or you can use the front office PL. Both have advantages, disadvantages, uh, but definitely the fact that uh, banks need to have that process in place is a key change. So, in some many changes, we highlighted uh, three of them in the move away from value at risk towards expected shortfall, the introduction of the market liquidity horizon, and the fact that banks need to have a uh, PL attribution process in place. Well, we talked about the changes in the internal model uh, approach. So um, if you think about it, banks have to calculate their regulatory capital based upon expected shortfall metrics. And suppose that you're using the full revaluation uh, approach. Well, that will significantly increase the number of operational uh, runs that are needed to support the, uh, the regulatory capital calculations. Um, this comes actually in addition to the requirements that you have to do this um, on an asset uh, class basis. You have to configure the system in a business as usual and in, uh, in a stressed uh, environment. So the, the multiplicative effect actually of all of these uh, requirements will lead to a significant increase in the uh, number of operational uh, runs bank need to do to support their capital calculations. Also banks that uh, only apply the sensitivity based approach, so the more standardized uh, approach, the, the market risk systems will be, uh, will be impacted. Uh, first of all, you need to have pricing sensitivities uh, available. They can come from the uh, front uh, office system, so controlled by the, the trading uh, environments. They can also come actually from a standalone uh, pricing uh, risk management uh, system, which ensures more model and, uh, and data uh, independence. Wherever they come from, it's really important, it's really key actually that there's a high degree of transparency uh, related to the input, related to the calculations that produce the, uh, the sensitivities, and this is very much uh, in order to reduce the, uh, the model uh, risk. Secondly, banks will need to revisit their hedging uh, strategies. If very often banks actually hedge their risk positions in the banking books by entering um, into derivative uh, trades with, uh, with external counterparties. Very often this is done actually in two stages, in two steps. First of all, you have an internal uh, derivative uh, trades with your uh, trading uh, books, so that's called an internal risk transfer. In a second step, then you have an offsetting derivative uh, trade done and executed by the trading uh, book with external Internal counterparties. And in order to avoid that uh, banks actually use internal risk uh, transfers to lower uh, capital uh, requirements, the Basel Committee introduced additional capital uh, needs for internal uh, risk transfers. That's for credit risk, for interest rate risk, for equity um, uh, risk. So banks really need to revisit their hedging uh, strategies. And ideally, this is done in such a way that banks optimize both the economic and the, uh, the regulatory uh, capital because holding capital is, um, is really costly.
And last but uh, not least, uh, I would also like to mention the impact on the, on the stress testing uh, system. So uh, stress testing became a supervisory uh, language. We all know that uh, market risk is by no means uh, any different. So uh, also their banks will need to revisit the capabilities of the systems and see whether there's adequate uh, to cater for the, for the new requirements.